Hello, this is Dave Lee Travis welcoming you to the brand new 2002 Top 10 Auto Show. Over the next 12 weeks, I'll be taking you through our Top 10 car categories and we'll be finding out which cars are the class leaders for 2002, as voted for by our Men and Motors panel of experts, who include Steve Fowler, editor of Auto Car, Mike Askew, associate editor of Auto Express, Rob Ahern, editor of What Car, and Ivor Carroll, the editor of Diesel Car Magazine. Now, this panel of experts have awarded points to each of the vehicles for practicality, image and style, performance, ride and handling, and overall value for money, with the scores adding up to one overall winner in the top 10 category, which, for this week, will be the top 10 city car of 2002. Now, it wasn't that long ago that the words city car implied something that was cheap and cheerful, rather than reliable and well put together. Well, the sort of car that you could squeeze into a tight space in town and not bother if it got the odd knock and scrape. But nowadays, even the cheapest of city vehicles are often very well put together. They're very reliable and have many features and accessories that you'd find on much more expensive family vehicles, making this one of the most competitive car markets for the manufacturers. In at number 10 is the cheeky... Seicento from Fiat. The Seicento's popularity as a city car brings what essentially should be an ideal town runabout straight into our top 10. Size-wise, the Seicento has all the attributes that any capable city car needs. In other words, it's small enough to fit into the tightest of spaces, and when it's parked up, there's a good chance the Seicento will attract a few admiring glances, as Fiat have really tried to give this little car a bit of Italian flair, even if it is made in Poland. On the inside, the Seicento is reasonably well appointed, with the top spec models getting electric windows and central locking, and all models getting power steering, something that's a huge plus in a city car. And again, Fiat have made an effort to try and spice up the interior, but generally the materials used have a low quality feel to them, and the rear passenger room is very limited, making this car no good for four adults. So, for all you technical fanatics out there, here's the manufacturer's statistics for the Seicento. So now let's see how our panel of experts mark the car in our top 10 auto show categories. So in 10th slot, with a total score of 49%, the Fiat Seicento. At number 9 is the little car with the big name, the Peradua Calisa. Peradua are one of a small number of Malaysian car companies who've managed to get a foothold in the competitive UK market by producing good, reliable, low-cost cars. In fact, the Peradua Kalisa is, in its basic spec, the cheapest production car currently available in the UK at just under five grand. And it's the price that's the really attractive aspect of the Kalisa, as it's unlikely that people will be snapping their necks to admire its lines. Having said that, its looks certainly aren't offensive, with curves reminiscent of the soon-to-be-replaced Nissan Micra. The interior is, like the exterior, fairly uninspiring, but you do get the feeling that the switches and trim will last longer than those used in the Fiat. As you'd expect from a car costing under five grand, the Kalisa isn't brimming with extras, but twin airbags and power steering are standard across the range, with the top-spec car getting electric windows and mirrors. However, unless you want to listen to a little engine buzzing away all the time, you'll have to shell out extra for the stereo cassette on all models. So, as a low-cost, good-performing city car, the Peradua has a worthy place in our top 10. But let's see how our panel scored it in the men and motors categories.
So, in ninth slot, with a score of 50%, the Peredua Kalisa. In at number eight is Japan's very own Pope Mobile, the Suzuki Wagon R. Whilst many people's initial reaction has been to poke fun at the looks of the Wagon R, this is definitely a serious contender in the top 10 city cars of 2002. Now, whilst the Wagon R does look like a packing crate on wheels, that tall boxy shape means that there's a pretty impressive amount of space inside. In fact, this is the first car of our top 10 where you can genuinely seat five adults. And, Though there's only one level of trim available on the Suzuki, you do get electric mirrors and windows, central locking, power steering, a decent stereo, and driver and passenger airbags. But Dave, I hear you cry. With all these great features, surely there's a trade-off. Well, you'd be right. Although the car is great around town, the high-sided design makes it very wallowy on the faster open roads. And if the wind picks up on the motorway, you will know about it. Never mind hang on to your hats, it's a case of hang on to your lunch. Well, now let's see how our expert panel have marked the Suzuki Wagon R. In eighth slot then with 53%, the Suzuki Wagon R. On to seventh place with the smallest of the bunch, the smart car. If you're one of those people to whom parking is a task of unimaginable difficulty and stress, the smart car could well be the answer to your prayers. Why? Because it's unbelievably small. You really have to sit in the driver's seat to appreciate just how close you are to the four corners of the vehicle. Now, that doesn't mean that the interior of the smart is cramped. Far from it. Although it only seats two people, there is a surprising amount of head and leg room, making it a useful car even for those over six foot. Uh, useful, that is, unless you want to take a load larger than a sports bag on a journey that involves motorways. We say that because the stowage space on this little car leaves a lot to be desired, and obviously, there's no room for your mates here. And that motorway thing, hmm. Let's just say that sitting in a Smart at 70 in the middle lane of a motorway with wagons overtaking you is an experience that you would charge people money for at the fairground, only scarier. So, let's see how the expert panel have rated the smart in the five top ten categories. At seventh place then, with 58%, the smart car. On to sixth place with the Vauxhall Aguila. I know what you're thinking here. I've seen this car somewhere before, and fairly recently. Well, that's because the Aguila is pretty much identical to the Suzuki Wagon R that we've already seen. Now, although the Vauxhall and Suzuki look the same, there are quite a few differences. Firstly, the engines. The Aguila has a choice of two, a 1 litre and a 1.2, both of which are taken from the Corsa range. Whilst the 1 litre is a little flat, the 1.2 is actually quite peppy and it has ample performance for running around town. It also produces more oomph than the Suzuki's 1.3 unit. On the inside, there's obviously the same amount of space as on the Suzuki, but the Vauxhall does have a slightly higher quality feel to it, even if it isn't as well-spec'd as the Wagon R. 
Where the Vauxhall does win out over its Suzuki cousin, however, is with its overall image and build quality, as given the choice, I'm sure that many people would prefer to drive around in the cheaper Vauxhall. So let's see how our expert panel have marked the Vauxhall Aguila. In sixth place then, with a total score of 59%, the Vauxhall Aguila. In at number five is the curvaceous Korean, the Deu Matisse. Whilst you may be surprised that a Deu can beat a Vauxhall in a top 10 of cars, well, when you look closely at what the Matisse offers, it has genuinely earned a slot in the top five city cars of 2002. You can't dispute the fact that the Matisse is actually quite a nice car to look at. It's curvaceous and cute, something that you could never say about the Aguila, yet the shape isn't too clever, but the car would date quickly. When it comes to space, the Deu fares pretty well, and the straight-back roof means that there's pretty good headroom for the driver and front and rear passengers. It's also fairly well equipped, but again, as this is a bargain-priced car, you can't expect as much kit as on some of its more expensive rivals. So, that's the stats from the manufacturer, but let's see how our panel of experts have marked the Matisse. In fifth place then, with a total percentage of 60, the Deu Matisse. So that's it for part one of our top 10 city cars of 2002. Do join us after the break when we reveal our top four. Welcome back to the all-new Top 10 Auto Show, where this week we're looking at the Top 10 City Cars of 2002. In at number four, then, is the first of our Gallic cars, the Peugeot 106. As we get towards the number one spot in our Top 10, you can expect that the competition starts to get very fierce. And when you look at the specification of all but the basic Peugeot 106, you can see that their gloves are definitely off. You get power steering, remote central locking, a CD player, electric windows, immobilizer, driver and passenger airbags and metallic paint, and all for seven and a half grand. Out on the road, the 106 is also pretty impressive, with even the basic Zest 1 model being quite good fun to drive. It has good responsive steering and a reasonably composed ride on all but the harshest of road surfaces. But the 106 GTI will give you the most thrills as it has the 1.6 16-valve engine, which packs a fierce 120 brake horsepower. On the outside, though, the 106 is far from ugly, and it's started to show its age. Remember, the original 106 was launched over 10 years ago. And, as many a movie star will prove, there's only so much that a facelift can do for your image. From the manufacturer's figures then, to those of our panel of experts. In fourth place, with an overall percentage of 61, the Peugeot 106. In third place in our top 10, we have the Lupo from Volkswagen. Now you might think that Volkswagen's legendary build quality and style would be lost on a little city car. Well, you'd be very wrong, as the Lupo is every bit of VW. 
From the outside, the panel fit is as precise as the Passat, with lines that are both smooth and stylish. And from the front, you'll be in no doubt as to the make of the car you're looking at, as the Lupo now has the family face of its bigger brothers, the Polo and the Golf. That same VW quality is carried throughout the interior which feels extremely solid and well put together and is without doubt the classiest cabin in the Super Mini class. There's also a great sense of occasion behind the wheel of the Lupo and you really feel you're driving something special. But then with prices starting at 7,400 quid, you could argue that you should be getting something special. The interior space of the Lupo is a little disappointing. It's fine up front with good head and leg room and there's plenty of adjustments for that ideal seating position, but the rear space is very, very limiting. In fact, it's really only suitable for children. The boot is also very small with only enough room for a couple of shopping bags. On a positive note, the Lupo is a pretty good ride despite the small wheelbase, though the stiffer GTI is the cream of the range. As ever, let's see how our expert panel have scored the Lupo in our top 10 auto show categories. At number 3 then, with a score of 62%, the VW Lupo. At number 2 in our chart is the Citroen Saxo. If the voting for this category of car was down to the Boy Racer Brigade, the Citroen Saxo would have come top, as it's the absolute favourite with those looking for a sporty hatchback. In all forms, the Saxo is a great handling car with a superb suspension setup and lovely steering, but the warm VTS and hot VTR models take this one step further with a really involved and exciting drive. When it comes to style, despite its years, the Saxo is still a bit of a looker, but compared to the all-new Citroen C3, you have to say that the Saxo styling isn't cutting edge, and I'm sure it won't be too long before its look will be rather dated. The interior, though, is still very smart and purposeful with nice clear instruments and controls and plenty of stowage space for all of your bits and pieces, although the Saxo has the same limited rear space as the Peugeot 106 as both cars share the same platform. Well, now let's take a look at those all-important manufacturer's facts and figures. But for today, the most important figures are the scores of our panel of experts. So, with an overall score of 63%, the Citroen Saxo. Any guesses then as to what our top city car of 2002 is? Well, before we reveal it to you, here's a quick reminder of the top nine. In at number 10, the cheeky Italian Fiat Seicento. At number 9 is the Peradua Calisa from Malaysia. Taking 8th place is Japan's Suzuki Wagon R. Number 7 this year is the Smart Car. In at number 6 is the Wagon R derived Vauxhall Aguila. At number 5, Korea's curvy Deu Matiz. In 4th place is the perky Peugeot 106. Onto the top three with the classy VW Lupo. And in second place this year is the tarmac hugging Citroen Saxo. The car gets off to a great start here as its roots lie with the previous Fiesta model, which was a superb handling car. And not just around town either, as the car's quite happy to take in the motorway miles as well. And if you thought that was enough, the little Ford will also give you a quite rewarding drive out on the B roads with a superbly balanced suspension and nicely weighted power steering which is standard across the range. There are four levels of trim available with prices starting at a very competitive six and a half grand. 
Whilst all of the range share the same peppy 1.3 litre petrol engine and the top of the range luxury car gets metallic paint, alloys and aircon, CD player, electric windows and mirrors and even leather seats, the price soars towards 10 grand, so the entry level models are by far the best value. Where the car really beats the competition is with its space. Because of the curved roof design, there's bags of room for the driver and passenger, and a reasonable amount of rear passenger space too. There's also a good amount of space in the boot. Combine that with the car's all-round driving ability, and you have a really versatile car. We know it's the winner, but let's see how our expert panel marked it in the top 10 auto show categories. So, with the Ford car, you have great handling, good practicality, good specification and excellent value for money, making it the worthy winner of the top 10 city cars of 2002. Hi, this is Gary Shufield. I'm here at the Motor Show. I'm on the Ford stand. I'm with Peter Fleet. Peter, it's lovely to be here. But I'm going to be presenting you with an award for the Ford car. It has been voted as the top city car by our panel of experts who are the editors of the top motor magazines. What do you have to say about that? Marvellous. Absolutely delighted. Um, our KA is uh, just tremendous for us. Uh, it's for people who really want to make a statement about themselves standing out from the pack accounts for four out of ten vehicles like this sold in the UK uh, and we're delighted that your readers and journalists love it just as much as we do. I'm Dave Lee Travis. Thanks for watching and do be sure to join me next week when we'll be checking out the top ten super minis of 2002.